Coming in at number 10, Johnny Depp threw his phone at Amber, causing injury. This is definitely one of the biggest ones on the list. The initial case against Johnny that he harmed Amber physically exploded onto the internet back in 2016 after the former couple got divorced with irreconcilable differences cited as the reason. Although they had initially made a joint statement saying that the divorce was amicable, it very quickly got ugly when Amber filed a restraining order against her former lover. During the case against him, she alleges that Depp threw a cell phone at her during a fight, which struck her in the eye and the cheek, and that he claims he screamed at her, grabbed her face, and pulled her hair. She also submitted a photo of her face all bloodied and bruised. But documents later falsified this claim when LAPD officers who responded to the call during the time of the fight stated that they found no evidence of any crime having taken place. In the current defamation case, Heard's lawyer sub peonied the LAPD, which basically means they called the cops to court. I guess during these current suits, we'll see more of an elaboration on that fight, but as of now, that's all we have. Number nine, they both claim that neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. In August 2016, after their divorce had been officially finalized and settled, the pair released another statement saying, quote, our relationship was intensely passionate and at times volatile, but always bound by love. Neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. There was never any intent of physical or emotional harm. Fast forward to now, the claims that neither party has made false accusations has been completely turned on its head. Not only that, but financial gain is at the forefront of these cases. Currently, Depp is suing her for $50 million and she is counter suing for $100 million. I'd say that lines the pockets pretty well. Number eight, Amber donated $7 million to a children's hospital. After their divorce was finalized, Amber pledged that she would donate $7 million of the money that she got from Johnny to the American Civil Liberties Union and the Los Angeles Children's Hospital. In 2021, a New York judge partially granted a petition from Johnny to determine whether the donations had actually been made. What was found was that she did not in fact donate the money, but had planned to do so. Quote, my client is still planning to donate one half of her total settlement to the ACLU and the other half to CHLA. And while it is undetermined what those payment schedules may be, she has already made the first payment toward the pledges. She fully intends to continue to give the full $7 million, but she can't do it yet. She will do it when she can, but she has given a significant amount to both. Hmm, what's the hold up, Amber? Coming in at number seven, Amber Heard wrote her op-ed insinuating that Johnny hurt Amber's career. In the now famous Washington Post opinion piece that Amber Heard wrote that spawned the defamation case, Amber alleged that her divorce from Johnny Depp had practically blacklisted her from Hollywood. Quote, a movie I was attached to recast my role. I had just shot a two year campaign as the face of a global fashion brand and the company dropped me. Questions arose as to whether I would be able to keep my role as Mira in the movies Justice League and Aquaman. In fact, Amber had barely lost any traction. She didn't get her name taken off of Justice League and she's doing just fine filming for movies as we speak. But Johnny Depp got fired off of Fantastic Beasts and he's barely been in anything these days. Although Amber cried victim herself, it is extremely apparent that that isn't really the case. First up, Amber displaying contempt. Court TV spoke with body language expert Janine Driver to speak about all the small details that she noticed while watching the trial. When speaking about things that people at home might have missed, Driver said that Amber was displaying signs of contempt. Contempt is a pattern of attitudes and behavior, often towards an individual or group, but sometimes toward an ideology, which is the characteristics of disgust and anger. When talking about signs of contempt, Driver said, quote, it's on the left side of her face right there. It's moral superiority, and it's out of place, especially for a battered woman. I work with battered women, they're not leaking contempt. The expert continued that signs of contempt were shown in other women like Casey Anthony and Jodi Arias, who the public were convinced did horrible acts and were hiding the truth. Driver continued, quote, The bigger the audience, the more often we will see contempt. And we're seeing it every single day on Amber Heard's face, never once on Johnny Depp's face. Contempt is one of the seven universal emotions that cannot be hidden on a person's face, so it's giving us a true window into what's happened in her mind. Next up, Johnny Depp hand movements. One body language expert noted that Depp might have been deceptive during his testimony about hurting his finger. When he was on the stand to testify about when he allegedly put his hand through a wall out of anger, Depp denied this and told a different version of events, claiming his finger was hurt after her threw a bottle at him. However, the body language expert notes that the large pauses he had while telling the story is concerning and might signify that he is trying to piece together a story rather than the truth. Although it's normal to be careful with words during a trial, the expert noted deceptive behavior and a quote, condescending smirk, 
face touching and grooming by running his hand through his hair. He also frequently blocked his mouth. This all contributed to him being a quote, charming storyteller. He also injected emotion into his retelling of events to connect to his audience even more. The expert believes that Depp 100% punched a wall, but that he told the truth when he didn't sustain his finger injury at the time. Johnny smiling in court. During the trial, we have seen Johnny smile or smirk during intense or uncomfortable moments. Expert Janine Driver explained how this can be tied back to the childhood abuse that Johnny faced when he was younger something Johnny testified about during the trial. When speaking about the science behind it, Driver said, quote, when people feel weak or vulnerable or emasculated, they'll often smile in those moments, adding, quote, it's a way to not let us see how much suffering they're in. It becomes a defense mechanism that people will use throughout their life. I'm sure Johnny Depp has been doing this for years. This smile right here is saying I'm uncomfortable. Amber touches her face. While Amber was listening to an audio recording in court, the body language expert observed that Amber touched her face a lot. The expert told viewers that when anyone's levels of stress and anxiety are increased, one of the ways our body deals with it is by touching our face. Continuing quote, it's like recharging your cell phone. It does a cognitive reset and it does an emotional reset. Amber specifically touched her face on her forehead, which is significant to the body language expert. Touching the forehead is an indicator of shame, and since the audio recording was making Amber look bad, it makes sense she would feel shame. Even though Amber touched her face quite a bit, the expert noted that Amber never showed any quote, microaggressions of sadness throughout her eyebrows or corners of her lip, as one would expect in a trial like this. When the expert was asked about the audio recordings, Driver said the recordings should be thrown out of court, adding quote, of course she's going to be whistling Dixie saying good things in these audio recordings, most of them. Who knows, she could be acting. This does not prove she is a battered woman, like the article said in the Washington Post. Amber Heard looks turtled. YouTube channel The Behavioral Arts did an entire video on some of the body language that's been displayed during the trial. When specifically talking about Amber, they claim that Amber looked, quote, turtled during the trial, like she was trying to draw less attention to herself and look smaller. The expert explains that this is a defense mechanism when people feel insecure. She also showcases stress in key areas of her chin and forehead. They also noticed that Amber was giving quote, non-answer statements when testifying. When watching a portion of the trial, the host notes that Amber has shifty eyes when someone is talking to her. One reason for this could be a condescending lack of interest, with it signaling that the person who is speaking to her is not important enough. Heard has defensive body language. During the trial, the body language expert noticed that Heard seemed very aggressive, which is interesting because it's not normally an emotion that would be seen in a domestic harm case. At one point, Heard started to aggressively scratch her shoulders so fast that she almost knocked off her microphone. When Heard's lawyers objected to some questions, Heard started looking down, showing that she was thinking of what to say next. Heard then danced around Depp's questioning using a technique called speech disfluency. She stumbled over her words and also used fluff words like um to stall time and to think about what to say next. The expert also noted that when answering some questions, it seemed like she had rehearsed what to say. Since she's an actress, that makes a lot of sense. The expert noted she looked like she had, quote, forgotten her lines. Heard forgot key details while testifying. When Heard was describing some of the altercations she had with Johnny, the body language expert noted that Heard seemed to forget a lot of key details, including which parts of her body were specifically hurt when the bottle was allegedly thrown at her by Johnny. Heard was also fluttering her eyes, another deflection technique. The expert also emphasized that Heard minimizes some of her previously mentioned altercations to put further stress on others, trying to manipulate how things are being interpreted by listeners. Number six, Amber told the court that Johnny had pushed Kate Moss down the stairs. This claim was basically instantly debunked and shut down by the court. Based on a kind of old rumor, Amber voiced unsubstantiated claims that Johnny Depp had pushed his former girlfriend, Kate Moss, down the stairs after she stood up for her sister during a fight. The lawyer defending Johnny said that she was basically making up accusations as she went along to try and paint him in the worst light possible. Number five, Amber's sister lied to the court defending Amber herself. The third week of the trial of Johnny Depp against The Sun, a magazine that published a piece calling him a wife harmer, Amber's sister was called to testify for The Sun. Then the day after her testimony, when she claimed that Amber had never hurt her or harmed her in any way, a video was sent to Johnny's lawyers by an anonymous source, which disproves that statement. Depp's lawyers claims that the video demonstrated that the sister had lied and tailored her testimony to quote, meet her sister's evidence. The footage in question was a clip from a reality show featuring Amber's sister claiming that quote, I can't believe Amber beat your ass. Number 10, Amber lying about having a broken nose. 
Two days ago, during a recounting of one of the many fights that Amber and Johnny have found themselves in, Johnny Depp took the stand in Virginia to address the moment he realized that Amber Heard had quote, flat out lied about breaking her nose during one of their fights. According to Fox, the actor began by explaining how Amber once attacked him in his home office and proceeded to accuse Depp of having broken her nose during the altercation. Immediately after it, Depp recalls Heard saying, quote, Way to go, Johnny, you broke my nose. However, the actor later admitted that he crept inside her bathroom. Quote, I pulled the Kleenex out of the trash bin. I inspected it pretty closely and realized it was nail polish, nail varnish. While this isn't a confirmed instance and is more so a personal recount, her lying about having a broken nose would be an extremely substantial situation of horrible and manipulative behavior. Number nine, Amber lying about being hit in an altercation. Another instance of a fight between the former celebrity couple where what Amber says directly contradicts what others who were present in the situation have said. In an instance where a verbal altercation occurred between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, Depp's bodyguard has finally come forward to offer insight into what really happened behind closed doors. The bodyguard, whose name is Malcolm Connolly, took the stand and alleged, quote, As time went on, you know, I could see them change. I could see Amber change. I could see Johnny getting quieter. When he recounted some instances where he'd heard occasional arguments between the couple, he stated, quote, I could hear at times in certain accommodations when this thing happened. I could hear Amber screaming. I could hear shouting and bawling, and I could hear it going on. Mostly, I could hear Amber screaming. I'd never seen any slapping or grabbing or punching or hitting, but I did see scratches on Johnny's neck, maybe a fat lip in the corner, maybe a bruising on the eye socket. It was getting more regular, not every week, but it was definitely happening, yeah. This directly contradicts Amber's narrative that she's never hurt or touched Johnny violently, and for others who aren't involved in your trial to go against your statement is a massive deal. Number eight, Amber faked bruises with video evidence showing it. As was exposed during the previous defamation trial of Johnny Depp against The Sun back in 2020, there were photos of Amber's alleged injuries. It shows Amber's cheek being battered and bruised, and she's got a swollen eye. Taken at face value, this is an awful instance of someone's face being physically harmed during an angry fight. But Amber has been accused of lying about the injuries and said she may not even have had any. There is security footage of Amber and her sister directly after when the fight was supposed to have occurred and her face doesn't show any sign of visible harm. On top of that, the footage shows Amber and her sister laughing and throwing fake punches at one another. It seems more like a joke than anything else. If it is proven in the court that Amber did lie about being injured in the now infamous photos of her bruised up face, that will be a massive red flag where the judge may not be so lenient this time as he had been before. Number seven, the cops at the scene didn't notice a disturbance. In the previous defamation trial that Johnny held against the Sun for them labeling the actor as someone who harms his wife, there were tons of defendants who weren't allowed to take the stand because the trial focused on whether or not the Sun had falsely reported the claim. Although it had to do with Amber, it wasn't necessarily directly about Amber. Now that Johnny is suing her directly, we're hearing about the relationship from a lot of people who weren't allowed to take the stand before. One such case is the LAPD officer who responded to a call about a domestic disturbance at Amber and Johnny's home. While Amber claimed that she had been hit by Johnny, the LAPD officer tells a very different story. He says that he never saw any sign of disturbance and that Amber looked completely fine with no bruising or harm done to her face. He also said that Amber has been extremely unhelpful and refused to sign a police report or hand one in for filing. Later on, paparazzi had taken photos of Amber where she had bruises all over her face, so it just doesn't make sense. If the cops said that he didn't see any harm, why then a few hours later was her face all battered up in paparazzi pictures? Number six, Johnny Depp was away when another domestic fight happened. According to CBC News, when Amber had initially filed for a restraining order against Johnny, she showed up to the courthouse with a bruise on her face. But the evidence seems to point to Amber giving herself the injury because of one small detail. Johnny's lawyer is claiming that she gave herself the injury to ruin Depp's reputation. He proved this by stating that Johnny and Amber hadn't even seen each other for at least six days before she was in the courthouse, and the bruises looked way too fresh for six days of healing. Johnny was on the European leg of a tour he was doing with his band, The Hollywood Vampires. This means that there's absolutely no way that he could have been the one to hit her. Number five, witness calls Amber a liar. On April 13th, the second day after this defamation trial began, one witness to the couple's messy drama, Ike Barak, took to the stand. He's Johnny's friend of 42 years and was called to the stand to state whether he had seen any signs of Johnny doing any harm against Amber. He stated that he never saw Amber being physically hurt despite living next door to the couple. He came close to tears when he described what he called Amber's fraudulent accusations against Depp. He also made sure to state that he liked Amber and considered her to be a friend, but is extremely stressed by the situation in the court. 
He also stated that he was angry about, quote, phony pictures taken and put in tabloids and the fake narratives and the way Heard got a fraudulent domestic claim to extort and blackmail. There are many people affected by the malicious lie she's created. It's gone out the door and around the world and I can't even paint anymore. Number four, a makeup brand may expose Amber for more lies. On the 23rd of April, a makeup brand shocked everyone by entering into the fighting ring with one crucial piece of evidence that seemed to continue to suggest that Amber had been lying about the whole thing. Amber's lawyer claimed that the actress had used a makeup product by Milani Cosmetics to cover up her bruises that Johnny had given her. The only problem with that claim is that Milani's all-in-one correcting kit was not launched until 2017 as representatives of the brand stated themselves in a TikTok video that has gone explosively viral. The alleged harm occurred between 2012 and 2016. The makeup product would not launch until a whole year after Depp and Heard were divorced. While Heard's attorney didn't specifically name Milani Cosmetics in court, she did hold up the makeup kit in question and said that Amber carried it around in her purse every day to hide bruises. It could be that the attorney was just using the product as an example of the type of makeup Amber would have used, but it's also possibly just another one of Amber's lies to try and make Johnny appear more evil. Number three, a body language expert seems to peg Amber as using lying techniques. While the science of body language is far from concrete, one body language and behavioral expert is extremely suspicious of the way that Amber conducts herself during the trial. He explained that she frequently has shifty eyes when someone is talking to her. The most likely reason was, quote, condescending lack of interest. You are not important enough to hold my interest. He also states that Amber frequently had defensive body language, such as an aggressive way that she scratched her shoulder to where she nearly knocked off her microphone. Her lawyer's objection to some of the questioning found her looking down, indicating that she was thinking about what to say next. Number two, Amber didn't donate the money to charity like she promised. If we rewind all the way back to the initial divorce proceedings, Amber had stated to the court that she planned to take the $7 million that she made from the divorce case and donate it to the children's hospital and a workers' rights group. But a few days ago, a representative of one of the charities testified that his organization only received $1.3 million from Amber, including a $500,000 fund that was tied to Elon Musk, which would not be money from Amber herself. Although $1.3 million is a lot, it is definitely not the $7 million that she had promised to pledge to the charity. Quote, the entire case is really about Amber Heard's credibility. If Heard is going to lie about something easily verifiable, you have to ask yourself, what else is she lying about? says a journalist covering the court case. Number one, the phone call that proved Amber had hit Johnny Depp. Although this phone call is nothing new to the court, I'd say that it is one of the most damning pieces of evidence against Amber that catches her in a direct lie. It changed her defense from, I didn't hit Johnny, to, I caused less damage than Johnny. The phone recording is of Amber placating Johnny after an argument in which she defends herself. Quote, I can't promise I won't get physical again. I get so mad I lose it. She continues to say, quote, I was hitting you. I didn't know where the motion of my hand was, but you're fine. I didn't hurt you. I didn't punch you. I was hitting you. Number four, he said, she said in the current court cases. One thing is definitely clear. Both Amber Heard and Johnny Depp have harmed one another. Text messages surfaced that show Depp very clearly stated that he wanted to end Amber's life by burning her and doing awful things to her corpse. Meanwhile, we've seen tons of lies on Amber's part in her attempts to cover the own harm that she has done against Johnny as she continues to claim to only be a victim rather than playing equal parts as the perpetrator in this extremely obviously toxic and insane relationship. Coming in at number three, Johnny Depp's self-inflicted wound or not. In the 2016 Sun article libel trial, Johnny Depp claims that Amber had cut part of his finger off in Australia during a fight when he was there to film a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. It was later revealed in a voicemail to his doctor that Johnny had, in fact, cut his own finger off. The voicemail recording reads, and just so you know, a bunch of this will be bleeped, by the way, to keep it family friendly. Quote, hi, had another one. I cannot live like this. She is as full of as a Christmas goose. I'm done, no more. The constant insults, demeaning, belittling, most heartbreaking, that is only released from a malicious, evil, and vindictive but you know what? Far more hurtful than her venomous and degrading, endless educational ranting is her hideously and purposeful, hurtful tirades and her <laughs> shocking treatment of the man she is supposed to love above all. Her obsession with herself is far more important. She is so <laughs> ambitious. She's so desperate for success and fame. That's probably why I was acquired. Although she has hammered me with that, a sad old man has been I am. I'm so very sad, I cut the top of my middle finger off. What should I do? 
except of course go to the hospital. I'm so embarrassed for jumping into anything with her the world. Although it definitely was after a verbal altercation, Johnny has a history of drinking too much, and it is alleged that he drank way too much that night, had a fight with Amber, and it escalated to an insane degree with Johnny harming himself after a major depressive bout. Coming in at number two, Amber may have tried to get her friends to lie for her. In a report that was just posted only moments ago at the time of writing this, Amber Heard's good friend Eve Barlow was kicked out of court for a multitude of reasons. Eve was acting as part of Amber's legal team even though she has no expertise in the matter. It is alleged by the court that apparently she tried to intervene during testimonies from Johnny's witnesses, which is entirely not allowed in a bid to not let the truth Truth come out. She was also very recently kicked out of the courtroom and told not to return because she was live tweeting the processes, which is strictly under lock and key, after she was caught on her phone during the proceedings. Quote, Amber had her closest journalist friends sit in the front row with her legal team at the trial, live tweeting, texting, and posting information. Even though the court has continually sided with Amber, that can't look great on her to so obviously be having someone leak information. Coming in at number one, both Amber and Johnny have stated they never hit one another. Both are proved untrue. Now finally, the biggest one of all, and the root cause of all the legal proceedings going on. Whether or not you side with Amber over Johnny or vice versa, one thing is abundantly clear. No one person is the true victim here. While it was determined pretty early on that Johnny had hit Amber, even if it wasn't nearly as bad as she had alleged, it did happen. There is video evidence and voice recordings of aggression and harm against her. Similarly, however, Amber is the only one with a voice recording genuinely admitting to hitting Depp. In a phone call to Johnny, Amber stated, quote, I can't promise I won't get physical again. I get so mad I lose it. The hit in question was a slap. So when both parties choose to continue to deny any wrongdoing, does that mean that these legal battles will just continue to drag on forever as each person continues throwing accusations at one another with little regard for the truth. Number 10, Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz, the woman known best for her roles in movies like Vanilla Sky and tons of Spanish speaking films. She was also Johnny Depp's coworker in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. She played Angelica, the daughter of Blackbeard, and she is super outspoken about her support for Johnny Depp. In their statement about the issue, she said, quote, I've always been impressed by his kindness, his brilliant mind, his talent, and his peculiar sense of humor. I've seen Johnny in so many situations and he is always kind to everyone around. He's one of the most generous people I know. During six months of my first pregnancy, I spent every single day with him while we shot Pirates of the Caribbean. My husband and I will never forget the sweetness, protection, and kindness he treated me with during every single step of that process. We love him very much and I feel lucky to have someone so special in our lives. She hasn't fully gone against Amber Heard, but I think it's pretty clear just where her loyalties lie in this matter. Number nine, Javier Bardem. Now on to Penelope Cruz his husband, Javier Bardem. He revealed back in March 2020 during one of the previous court cases that his allegiance lies stoutly with Johnny Depp. They had previously worked together on a movie called Before Night Falls and again in Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales. In a statement, he said, quote, I stand by Johnny because I have always seen and felt a true caring and loving man in him. He's an extraordinary and unique artist who has listened to anyone who needed help. I not only love Johnny, but respect him deeply and thank him for being the free and careless little boy he is in his art and the mature and loving man he is in the lives of others. He's always there when we need him. I love Johnny because he is a good human being, trapped in the lies and manipulations of toxic beings and yet smiling and loving us all in spite of it. How? Through his music, through his acting, through his silence. This means a lot. Thank you, Johnny. Millions of others like me love you deeply. Coming in at number eight is Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder dated Johnny Depp for four years from 1989 to 1993. Having known him for so long, she felt inclined to give a statement on the conflict. Quote, I understand that it is very important that I speak from my own experience, as I obviously was not there during his marriage to Amber. But from my experience, which was so widely different, I was absolutely shocked, confused, and upset when I heard the accusations against him. The idea that he is an incredible incredibly harmful person is the furthest thing from the Johnny I knew and loved. I cannot wrap my head around these accusations. He has never physically hurt anybody I have seen. I truly and honestly only know him as a really good man. He's an incredibly loving, extremely caring,
caring guy who was so very protective of me and the people that he loves, and I felt so very, very safe with him. While she also didn't come out against Amber Heard, she did explain her sense of disbelief at the idea of Johnny ever hurting anyone. Number seven is Vanessa Paradis. Vanessa Paradis is Johnny Depp's ex-wife who is also a famous French singer. The two have two children together and were together for 25 years. Although they divorced in 2012, she was quick to come to the defense of her ex-husband who is a supportive co-parent. Quote, I have known Johnny Depp for more than 25 years. We've been partners for 14 years and we raised our two children together. Through all these years, I've known Johnny to be a kind, attentive, generous, and non-violent person and father. I am aware of the allegations which Amber Heard has publicly accused Johnny of for more than four years now. This is nothing like the true Johnny I have known, and from my personal experience of many years, I can say he was never harmful towards me. Her statement is eloquent and straight to the point, and for someone who also had a falling out with the man, she still holds such a high viewpoint of the actor. So what does that say? Next up is Kevin McNally, Johnny Depp's co-star who played Gibbs in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Although it's extremely unlikely that he will show up in court to testify for Johnny Depp, once rumors surfaced that Depp was to step down as Jack Sparrow, he stated, quote, My dream is that some sort of link will be needed between what has been before and whatever bizarre incarnation of what there is to come. But I sincerely think that my fate is so tied in with Johnny's that I will go with him if indeed he does go, which is a really beautiful thing to say about someone. Next up on the list is David Yates. David is the director of the Fantastic Beast series, a spinoff of Harry Potter that used to star Johnny Depp as one of the villains. Johnny was fired from his role after the allegations surfaced from Amber Heard when she wrote the article that she had been harmed by someone. Although not named, we all know who she was referring to. Anyways, he released a statement saying, quote, Honestly, there's an issue at the moment where there's a lot of people being accused of things. They're being accused by multiple victims, and it's compelling and frightening. With Johnny, it seems to me there was one person who took a pop at him and claimed something. I can only tell you about the man I see every day. He's full of decency and kindness, and that's all I see. Whatever accusation was out there doesn't tally with the kind of human being I've been working with. Coming in at number four, is JK Rowling. Okay, JK Rowling isn't really in anyone's good graces lately for various extremely valid reasons, but she did show a statement of support for Johnny Depp after he was initially hired for his role in the Fantastic Beast franchise that she had written. Despite receiving a lot of backlash for the decision to hire him, the Harry Potter author stated, quote, for me personally, the inability to speak openly to fans about this issue has been difficult, frustrating, and at times painful. However, the agreements that have been put in place to protect the privacy of two people, both of whom have expressed a desire to get on with their lives, must be respected. Based on our understanding of the circumstances, the filmmakers and I are not only comfortable sticking with our original casting, but genuinely happy to have Johnny playing a major character in the movies. Glad that worked out. Coming in at number three is Sia. Basically zero chance that she'll show up in court, but Sia is next on the list of celebrities who have been extremely outspoken in supporting Johnny Depp. In a tweet speaking about the matter, she stated, quote, just showing my public support support for Johnny Depp. I mean, I'd love him to get clean and stop with the jewelry, but he is clearly the victim after hearing those tapes. Fair enough on the jewelry aspect, sometimes it's a bit tacky. Coming in at number two is Sharon Osbourne. Another famous celebrity who left a show of support for Johnny Depp is the wife of Ozzy Osbourne and British television personality Sharon Osbourne. During an appearance on a talk show aptly named The Talk, Sharon stated, quote, it takes two to tango. I think that they had a very vulnerable relationship. I think they're both as bad as each other. She gave him as good as she got. It wasn't just like a little mouse in the corner being battered. I don't know what they were using. I have no idea who was doing what, but I know they were both drinking and it's a volatile relationship. Next on my list is an actor who is confirmed to be called to testify for his part in the aggressive texts that he and Johnny had exchanged about Amber Heard and the horrifying things they would do to her body. Paul Bettany co-starred with Johnny for the 2010 movie The Tourist. They also worked together on Transcendence and Mordecai. Having worked together on several films, the two quickly became super close friends. Initially, he tweeted, quote, known Johnny Depp for years and through several relationships. He's the sweetest, kindest, gentlest man that I've ever known, just saying. Apparently, during the reading of the texts about Amber between the two actors, Paul felt ashamed of what he said and attempted to distance himself from the couple, which like, man, if you're gonna say that stuff, at least own it fully, don't shy away from it. First up, we got James Franco. Actor James Franco is one of the many witnesses that will be called to the stand on behalf of Amber Heard. 
The pair first met on the set of the 2008 movie, Pineapple Express, where they developed a friendship. That movie was one of the first in her career. According to People, Amber confided in James after an alleged physical altercation with Johnny. While Depp was on the stand talking about the breakdown of his marriage with Heard, he brought up Heard's relationship with Franco and how he believed that she was cheating on him. Along with meeting during the making of Pineapple Express, the pair also worked together on the 2015 movie The Adderall Diaries. Depp claimed he became suspicious of the pair's interactions during a scene he believed that Heard was having an affair. Johnny even admitted that he once confronted Amber about her relationship with James Franco. While the couple was on a flight from Boston to LA, Johnny decided to confront Amber about allegations that she was cheating with Franco. Later, a recording was played by Heard's defense, where Depp was heard saying, quote, I became irrational when you're doing movies. I become jealous and effing weird, and we fight a lot more. Depp also admitted to being insecure while with Amber, as he stated that he got jealous when Heard would go out with other people. James Franco has been long connected to Amber and her messy divorce, but has never made any public statements about where he stands. Although we can assume that he supports her, as they started dating while Amber accused Depp of a even though her denied having a relationship with Franco, that was deemed to be a lie when camera footage of Franco and Heard in an elevator were leaked. Heard brought Franco to her and Johnny's LA penthouse while Depp was away. Franco didn't give evidence or a witness statement, but Heard described the visit in May of 2016. She claimed that she had facial injuries after Depp threw a phone at her after he found feces in their marital bed, which Depp claimed she was responsible for, and we now know that Amber Heard was. With Heard saying in court that Franco made a comment about the bruises on her face, saying, quote, Oh my God, what happened to you? He saw my face when I let him in. He saw my face and said, What the Franco was also asked to testify for Johnny's case because Depp and his team want to confirm that Franco saw bruises on Heard's face when they met up that night. Although Franco agreed to testify, he stated his words must be kept secret, and if they leaked, Depp would be personally responsible. Hopefully, we get the full story when Franco is put on the stand in the coming weeks. Next up, Elon Musk. Elon Musk is another celebrity who is testifying on behalf of Amber Heard during her trial because they had a relationship around the time that Amber was accusing Johnny of getting physical with her. The reason Elon has been dragged into this case is because Johnny accused him of having an affair with Amber back in 2020. The accusation was enough to make major headlines at the time. It was never confirmed if the pair cheated or not, but it's clear that Amber and Elon had a romantic relationship. Elon and Amber started dating in the summer of 2016 and were spotted out multiple times in London. In August of 2017, it was reported that Elon had ended their year-long romance. The pair got back together months later, but called it quits yet again months later. A source told Mail at the time, quote, It's all over between Amber and Elon and she's devastated. It was his decision. Apparently, the timing between the two was not right. Another source confirmed the breakup and also confirmed that it was Elon's decision to end things. The pair cited their conflicting schedules as what kept them apart. Later, Musk admitted that he was heartbroken from the breakup and even claimed that Heard was more so responsible for the split, revealing, quote, I was really in love and it hurt bad. Well, she broke up with me more than I broke up with her, I think. Musk claimed after the split that he was so heartbroken, he hardly made it through the launch of the Tesla Model 3 event. Adding, quote, it took every ounce of will to be able to do the Model 3 event and not look like the most depressed guy around. For most of that day, I was morbid. Along with having a romantic relationship with Heard, Johnny Depp alleged in court documents that Elon had a, quote, three-way affair with Heard and model actress Cara Delevingne at Depp's and Heard's apartment in Los Angeles in 2016, while Depp was away in Australia. Although Musk denied this allegation and called Delevingne a friend. Musk has admitted to having dated her, but only after she filed for a divorce from Depp. When asked about their relationship, Musk further stated, quote, Also, I wish to confirm again that Amber and I only started going out about a month after her divorce filing. I don't think I was ever even in the vicinity of Amber during their marriage. It's hard to know if there's any more information that Musk has that could be useful to either Depp or Heard, but again, we will be finding out shortly in court. Ellen Barkin is another celebrity who is taking the stand in the defense of Amber Heard. Barkin is an actress who briefly dated Depp many years ago and supports Heard's claims that he can get violent. Depp and Barkin worked together for a brief time in the 1990s, shortly after his split from Winona Ryder. When Barkin and Depp first met in 1998 on the set of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, he had just come out of a long-term relationship with Winona Ryder. After splitting from Ryder, Depp began seeing Barkin. They were at a pretty large age gap, with Barkin being nine years older than Depp. In her deposition in support of Amber, Barkin claims that while she was dating Depp, they got in a fight and he ended up throwing a wine bottle at her, although Depp denies this. He claims the relationship was a casual one and Barkin wanted to be more serious, saying that he believed her accusations were due to a grudge. When speaking about their relationship, Depp recalled meeting her while making Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, adding, quote, She wanted a proper relationship with me and I did not want that. 
I didn't feel the same about her as she did me and I suppose from that moment on she became very very angry and since then I have not spoken to Miss Barkin nor has Miss Barkin spoken to me. Obviously if the story is true it shows that Johnny has been violent with his partners in the past and it would add more weight to Heard's allegations. Raquel Pennington Raquel Pennington is a close friend of Amber Heard's that will be testifying in court that she witnessed bruises and cuts on Heard's body during her marriage to Depp. Deadline reported that Pennington's name was mentioned as Depp recounted a past confrontation with then-wife Heard. Pennington was also present on their wedding day. Pennington is involved in this case because she was neighbors with Heard and Depp while they were living in their downtown LA penthouse apartment. Pennington and Heard have been friends for almost two decades, with Pennington even testifying during Johnny Depp's libel case against the Sun newspaper in 2020. During the libel trial, Pennington said that she, quote, became really scared for Amber's life. Pennington also testified that Heard had, quote, deep lacerations from her wrists to her elbows, and the soles of her feet had numerous small cuts, adding that Heard still had scars on her arm from the incident. But Pennington did also state that she'd never actually seen Depp hit Heard. So there is some room to think that Amber Heard got these cuts and bruises from someone else other than Depp. And finally, Tassia Van Ray. When Depp first started to allege that Heard was the violent one in their relationship, not him, news that Heard had been violent towards a past partner went viral. While Heard was in a relationship with Tessa Van Ray, she was accused of physical harm in 2009. Heard was arrested by Port of Seattle Police on September 14th of 2009 after the formal couple got into an altercation at the airport. Apparently, Heard grabbed and struck Van Ray's arm. Heard was arrested and then had to go in front of a judge the next day. In the end, prosecutors declined to press charges. Although years later, when the allegations again came to light, Van Ray defended Amber, claimed the altercation was not what was described by police. In a statement issued by Heard's publicist in 2016, Van Ray said that Heard had been, quote, wrongfully accused and that the entire incident had been blown out of proportion, claiming the cops had oversensationalized what happened. Van Ray continued, quote, I recall hints of misogynistic attitudes towards us, which later appeared to be homophobic when they found out we were domestic partners and not just friends. When speaking about her feelings towards Amber at the time, she continued, quote, It's disheartening that Amber's integrity and story are being questioned yet again. Amber is a brilliant, honest, and beautiful woman, and I have the utmost respect for her. Although Depp's camp refuted these words, and they claim that many former partners of Amber's came forward to share that her with those partners in the past clearly showing a pattern in her relationships. Heard and Van Ray had started dating in 2008 and later split in 2012, but still remained close friends, with Van Ray speaking out in defense of Amber during the trial. <laughs>